Hey guys, the final beta of Android 12 is here and I have it installed on my Pixel 4a. So this video is all about the sweet minor and major changes that comes with this beta build. So stick around as we uncover the changes. This is Philips Future. Drop a like to this video and let's get started. Now this being the last beta build of Android 12 and a step closer to the official stable build means stability has also improved and now is the perfect time to install and try out new features for those who are skeptical about installing the beta in the first place. Moving on to the changes, if you've been following me for a while now, you know that I've been eagerly waiting for Material U widgets and guess what, they're finally here. When you press and hold on the home screen, the widget speaker pops up like always or you can just press and hold the clock icon and select the widgets option to take you to the widgets page. Here you can see that the widgets and specifically the clock widgets have been revamped and animated as well. Here is a comparison of the widgets from the previous beta build against this new one and I must say that this looks gorgeous. Hopping onto the clock app you can see that Material U dynamic theming system is adopted here and it looks beautiful having this new Material U design. So when we change our wallpaper or the color theme you can see that the accent colors shift to the one that we've just selected. And this affects the clock widgets too. Another app that has adopted Material U theming system is the Calculator app. It's beautiful. There's also a new widget under Android S Easter Egg, and this can only be unlocked after setting the Android 12 Easter Egg to 12 o'clock. Once you've done that, the widget will basically show you all the color codes generated by Android 12 theme engine based on your wallpaper. This is more of a developer's than a consumer feature, so I'll just tuck it away. The lock screen has also received some minor tweaks, first one being the padding on clock text have been slightly increased and the widget has been pushed down by a few pixels. Here's a comparison so you can tell what I'm talking about. Secondly, the notifications now appear a little bit lower than they were before on beta 4. As I said, these are minor tweaks but noticeable. Moving on to the app drawer, we get this new feature that lets you search for anything in your phone and Google calls it universal search. As the name suggests, you can look up for anything, be it a setting, shortcut, contact, app, or even a pixel tip. Now, this is something that iOS has had for a very long time, but it's great that Google has finally added it to Android. When swiping up to the app drawer for the first time, you'll be asked if you want the keyboard to always show up for that quick search, which saves a lot of time. For instance, I can quickly search for battery shortcut right from the app drawer, and this will take me to the settings page specifically for what I've just searched. This is really handy. Other changes in this build include updated security patch to September 5th, 2021. And just in the settings page, under privacy, you will see a settings named Private Compute Core. And this is renamed from Device Personalization Services. In here, you can turn off or on keyboard suggestions and other features that use device machine learning, like smart replies. I'll keep that toggled on because I heavily rely on smart replies. This is a minimal one, but on the notification shed, the network connection icon shows an exclamation mark instead of an X where there is no cellular data connection. Those are some of the major changes that I've experienced so far, but if you think I've left any, then drop a comment down below and I'll be sure to pin it. Anyway, that's it guys. Thanks for watching. Drop a like to this video if you enjoyed and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Anyway, until next time, goodbye and most of all, stay safe.